Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Songwriter Spotlight. We're here on the grounds of the West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center in Brownsville, Tennessee, home of the Tina Turner Museum, the Sleepy John Estes Home, and the West Tennessee Music Museum. We're so glad that you've decided to join us tonight. My name is Sonia, and I will be your host. Our special guest this evening is Peter Fitzpatrick. Peter is a New Jersey native, but he's coming to us from Memphis, Tennessee. So help me in welcoming Peter to our Spotlight stage. Peter, thank you for being here this evening. I'm really excited about you being here in Brownsville, and I'm really excited to hear your music. So tell us, let's just dive right in and tell us a little bit about who you are. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm very, very happy to be here. Uh, my name is Pete Fitzpatrick. I go by Pete Fitz, which is easier than Fitzpatrick. You might not know that. But um, I'm from Red Bank, New Jersey. It's a little town about five miles from the beach, 10 miles north of Asbury, and 45 minutes south of uh, New York City. Well, I understand you come from quite a musical family. Tell us about growing up and really how your music journey began. Yes. Um, one of the major reasons I started is because my uh, older brothers played. So they play guitar, so I'm going to play. So when we had the chance, no one was home, and I wouldn't get beat up, um, I, I would pick it up. We started playing, and my brothers had friends who, who, who would come by, and there was always music in the house, a lot of times. We had a bunch of guitars, and as we got older, when my parents would leave, about five minutes later, all the amplifiers and the people would start piling into the living room. It's a lot, a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of music. How many brothers? I have three brothers, three, three older brothers. Uh, Kevin, Joseph, Kevin, Michael. And um, Joe, uh, Joe and Michael still play. And Kevin's thinking, thinking of picking up the mandola. Y'all recorded an album together? Uh, Joseph, Michael, and I recorded three CDs uh, under the, the Fitzpatrick's, recorded at Retro Media Studios in Red Bank, which is right across the Count Basie Theater. You may have heard of that. And um, very, you know, the first one was blues. A lot of the uh, uh, Mississippi, John Hurt blues, uh, Mississippi blues. Second was more folk and country, more original. And the third one was much of the same, mostly original. A lot of fun. You know, recording is always fun. I call recording 90% boredom and 10% uh, terror. Did you choose music as a career? I fell in love with music. And um, an odd thing because I'm uh, basically shy, but I do love to perform. And um, so playing and performing and uh, just writing music and playing music and learning music, it just it was, it seemed natural to me. You know, it was, it was my happy place. Well, how about playing this one now? I sure will. Yep. This one is called Falling Down Like Rain. <laughs> Thank you. 
Once I was a happy man But that life was just a game And now I'm looking for a heart like mine That's falling down that grave That's falling down that grave You push me away, then you ask me why I don't feel the same All I think about are the days gone by Then I'm falling down my brain I'm falling down my brain I'm falling down Songs. Uh, about 16, 17. 17 now, I can remember starting writing for our band. We were a country rock band. And uh, I started writing towards that. Um, Time to Fly South was one, you know, things like that. Always trying to be country. I've heard, I've heard the, uh, some of the recordings when we were 17, and, and um, we're trying to keep them under wraps, especially, <laughs> especially my singing. What made you want to start writing? I'm a creative person. Um, I'm just saying, you know, um, I like to draw, I draw cartoons, stick figure cartoons, but you know, and uh, since it's in me, you know, I used to write poetry, and then of course when music came, you put the poetry to music. That's just something everyone else was doing it too, and I just felt compelled. You know, what happens is um, either I get, uh, I'll be playing the guitar and I'll get a nice melody I can work out, or I'll think of it, you know, a turn of a phrase or something. I just, you know, just, the inspiration is great. That's when I'm really happy, when everything's just flowing, you know. What do you find inspires you more than anything? Love. One would hope. Have you written a lot of love songs? Oh yeah, I have. I've also, you know, I've also written mostly the other side. You know, that's the country music, you know, the old country songs. So how would you classify your music now? I would say folk Americana, something like that. Um, like I said, I like, we like pretty music. I like pretty music. A lot of finger picking, a lot of cascading melodies. And uh, so it's, it, that's what I try to do. Tell me what brought you to Memphis, Tennessee? Yes, I, um, it was an opportune time of my life. And uh, I had downsized, which means everything fit in my car. And uh, uh, an old friend of mine had a cottage. So it made it easy. I came down here for the music. I came to meet new people. And, and try to, you know, get in uh, other groups of singer-songwriter nights, meet other people, and, you know, I'm not looking for the stars, I'm looking to be happy and, 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 and you know, have a good time and enjoy performing and playing and writing. How has our recent pandemic and the COVID situation affected your music? The week before it happened, um, that's when I I'd met uh, another person, uh, Jesse, and I had a great weekend. I met a bunch of nice people. It was great. Everything's going forward, and everything stopped like everybody else. Um, it was difficult because I, I was going to a lot of open mics and you know singer songwriter things. Just sat home, and then after a bit, I started. You know, you have to write. You have to move on with life. It changed. It changed all of us. So. The next song that you're going to play was obviously influenced by the pandemic. My my friends back in uh, Red Bank before we were in the band, the Lost Wind Band. Well, they called me up as well, you know, Pete, you got to write this apocalyptic song of the, the four horsemen and death and destruction. And that's not what came out. This is what came out. Things won't always work out your way. Hurry up before. 
before the end of the day. Hurry up before the end of the world. Time is passing by as a flag on fur. There's nothing like a beautiful girl. Hurry up before the end of the world. Up before the end of your life. Remember happiness first before the strife. And there is always truth behind the lie. Hurry up before the end of your life. Hurry up before the end of the world. Time is passing by as a flag on pearl. And there's nothing like a beautiful girl. you wrote for them. Yes, we're going to record it next time we get together. The next time we go back to Red Bank. Um, the Lost Wind Band, we got together back in 2015. We came to Sun Studio, made a couple songs, brought back there, and then it turned into 13 songs. Now we're on the second, end of the second CD. And uh, Lost Wind Band, you can find it, find it on uh, all the major streaming uh, things they have. So how long did y'all play together before you moved to Memphis? Well, we, this was the band that we played to from like 17 until 22 or so. And then um, we got back together in 2015, but we're, we're spread all over. So we get together now and then. Uh, these days, you know, the one guy records the drums in Utah, the guy does the keyboards in Omaha, and, you know, and then now and then we get to back together and go to New Jersey and eat pizza. When you start your songwriting process, do you, do you go into it with a fixed idea of how something, how you want something to turn out? Sometimes I do, especially the writing. You know, um, if I want to write a certain type of song, I mean, I'll try it. And so it goes through this process of, um, like that one, the first line I wrote was hurry up for the end of the world. I'm like, yeah, this is gonna be great. And then I picked up the guitar and there you have it. Um, the, it all depends what clicks with me. You know, the process, you know, things have shaved off and it goes that way or that way. I mean, I've, I've started a song and, you know, it just weaves its own way. You know, I like, um, I think songs have, have a, a breath of life and you have to let them breathe too. So how many songs do you perform regularly of your own? I, I would have, um, I have about 50 songs that I've done that I'm comfortable to play at any time. And you remember all those words in your head. We are hopeful. <laughs> I do not remember all the titles, so if I were to do that, I would need, you know, my list. Tell me about the next song you're going to play, because when you told me the title, I immediately thought blues. Oh, yes. Um, well, this is called Rough and Tumble Like, which sounds like a blues song. And I was very into, uh, again, I was into finger picking. And um, so I, I had a troubling time coming up. So, you know, I, I talked to myself and I said, uh, you can be rough and tumble. I said, yeah, but I'm ready. So, it turned out to be this. I 
I'm ready for the rough and tumble life. Had some good time, had me some strife. When it's raining, I'll be holding her down. When it's sunny, I'll be walking downtown. I don't care what tomorrow may bring. Listen to the birds, what do they sing? I don't care if I'm feeling down. Have you ever seen a cat with a frown? There ain't no getting her back. Gonna lay my head on the track. Wait for the 445. I don't think she will ever come back. But when that dream whistle blows, I jump up and jump on, don't you know? I'll take you to the end of the line. What's yours was yours, what's left was mine. There ain't no getting her back. Gonna lay my head on the track. Waiting for the 445. I don't think that she will ever come back. But when that train whistle blows, I jump up and jump on, don't you know? I'll take you to the end of the line. What's yours? What's yours? What's left? What's mine? I'm ready for the rough and tumble line. I'm ready for the rough and tumble line. I'm ready for the rough and tumble line. What's yours? What's yours? What's left is mine. Your sense of humor definitely comes through in your music. I, I'd like to do that, yes. I, I've been accused of having a wicked sense of humor. And I think you mentioned you were a music minister at one time? Yes, yes. Um, there's a small church. They called it the Small Church in the Woods. And the woods in New Jersey are not as the woods in Tennessee are. But it was a, it was a small, it used to be a mission church, a uh, small little Roman Catholic church. You know what a Roman Catholic church? It's a church that moves around a lot. Roman, yes. And um, so I was a music minister there, and uh, it was it was... I learned a lot about music. Um, people would say, because they play guitar there. So they would say, uh, oh, so it's a folk mass. I said, no, it isn't. I play the greatest hits of the last 400 years on guitar. That's what I do. You know, Bach, Beethoven, it's fun. And uh, it was a great experience. You know, I played an awful lot, and it helped my singing, too. Because um, you actually have to sing the notes if you're song leading. And little black dots that move around. And uh, so my song style went from search and destroy to more of a meet and greet type thing. That was nice. I enjoyed it and I moved on. That was an interesting way to put it. Well, what about the next song? Okay. Yeah, so this is, I was at a, doing a singer-songwriter night at Westies in Memphis and um, I walked in and then a, a young lady I knew was sitting at the bar sat next to her and we, a beautiful chat, you know, just a nice person. Then she left and, and I'm like, only only silence and the scent remains. I said, so I wrote it down on the, the bar napkin, tucked it in, and brought it home, and uh, next morning I wrote the words and, and came up with the music. This is called Scent. She was walking in the wrong town. When I saw her, I was Dallas bound And she told me she was leaving home Said she needed some more room to roam The leaves were turning all the greens to reds Am I still living? Am I still dead? I woke up once and all I felt was pain only silence and dissent remains. But now the city seems so far away. Across the mountains and the Milky Ways. All I remember is a colored green. From the universe, all the movie screen. We drove that car right to the gates of hell. What the devil told her, 
Well, she'd never tell. Then backstage passes wilted in the rains. Only silence and the scent remains. Call me Tuesday if you still need that ride Across the Jordan to the other side No thoughts inside me, there's no hopeful dreams I lost the best damn thing I'd ever seen Now love ain't easy and I don't know why It seems like all you got to do is try Give it a try Where can I go, where can I start again? Silence and a scent remains. Only silence and a scent remains. Only silence and a scent remains. You know, as a songwriter, you seem very in tune with the little subtleties that are around you. Yeah, imagery, and I, I try. I try. I, th I mean, it's just this the way I write when I write things, it comes up and it's exciting sometimes you write three lines and all of a sudden the fourth line is like, oh my gosh, that really, that's really good, you know, or, oh my gosh, it really isn't, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a, I was a mailman for 30 years, so I was outside all the time, so a lot of things are rains, clouds, you know, the flight of birds, you know, if you see birds flying, the storm's coming, things like that, you know, I guess, you know, you get everything from everywhere around you. Do you ever, does it come to you naturally like that, or do you ever just sit down and say, I'm going to write a song? If I don't have the inspiration, I don't, I don't, I've learned not to, it's, I don't even try, you know, there's no gas in the tank, right? you know, when the inspiration hits and I'm ready, you know, it's just great, but to try to write something, uh, it never worked out well, you know. Well, actually, no, at one time I said I was going to write a song, and I did, because I don't remember it now, but it was a good song. So that happened one time. So I'm gonna write a song, sat down, oh, it came out. So do you find yourself sitting and playing and writing every day? Um, I play guitar every day. Writing depends, you know, what I'm doing. I have a little uh, uh, digital recorder, you know, a small one, and I'll, I'll put ideas down to that. I spend a lot of time with um, my other friends playing too. And writing. You mentioned Jesse earlier. Tell me a little bit about this new project you have in the work. Yes, uh, Fitzgerald and the Celestial Being, Beings Orchestra. Very excited. So about right before the pandemic, Jesse was was uh, it was through the Bartlett Songwriters Association. So I met him there. I played, and then uh, Jesse says, uh, "Here, here's, here's my electric guitar. Back this guy up." I'm like, "Okay, just met you, but fine. It's great." And we got together. Jesse and I, and we create a lot of a lot of magic, a lot of finger picking, beautiful magic. He's a wonderful guitarist. And after three weeks, we're like, we ought to record some of this. The rest just went to the universe. And then we did that for a couple months, and we thought we need, you know, maybe we should get a, a you know, female singer. Someone. We both saw, thought of the same uh, person, Janet Harris, who's a wonderful picker, wonderful singer songwriter. And uh, we brought her in, and this has been perfect. You know, it's really hit. We write a lot. Finally, I'm writing with other people, which I've never done before. The people that are watching this evening, how can they find out more about you and maybe follow you online? Yes, it's um, if you go on Facebook, Fitzgerald and the Celestial Beings Orchestra. Uh, we have a page there. Please like it. Uh, we have some videos there, uh, and we're hoping to do more live content weekly. Another song title that has me really intrigued is Cold Kind of Guy. Well, this is a fun song. This is one of the songs where I just wanted to do, um, we were hanging out with friends and someone said, you know, someone was a cold kind of guy. I don't know if it was me or not, but a song title. So I came up with this. He's a 
cold kind of guy Do you know the reason why Someone said goodbye to the cold hearted guy He'll seem so warm at first As if his love had died of thirst When you freeze the lonely smile cold hearted guy North wind that keeps blowing, ice storm and it's snowing, just like last night's halibut cold kind of guy. Don't you act surprised? When that warm affection dies and you see ice behind his eyes, cold hearted guy. Keep a lock upon your heart, baby, keep ten feet apart, cause when you freeze, you'll only smile at the cold hearted guy. He's the north wind that keeps blowing, the ice storm. Someone said goodbye. The cold kind of guy. Hey, the cold kind of guy. In the summer, he's freezing. Hey, the rhyme ain't no reason. It's cold as ice. Don't you look at him twice? It's cold, 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 cold kind of guy. That has been the most upbeat song I think you've played this evening. I know when you came to Memphis, the pandemic hit not long after that, but other than the pandemic, has Memphis met your expectations? I love, I love the people of Memphis. And uh, I, I recently, six months ago, I moved to Midtown. You know, it's just a nice spot. You can walk, it reminds me of my hometown, Red Bank in New Jersey, because you can walk to places. And uh, it's nice, I like Memphis. Thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you've enjoyed Pete's music as much as I have. And I hope that you will come back for our next Songwriter Spotlight. Again, thanks for joining us. If you've missed an episode or there's an episode you'd like to see again, please follow us on our Facebook and our YouTube channels. Pete, it's been such a pleasure to have you with us tonight. Thank you for coming to Brownsville and sharing your music, your songs, and your stories with us. The first song you wrote after coming to Memphis. Could you maybe tell us a little bit about that and play us out with that song? Yes, so um, I had this melody worked out when I was before I moved down here, and I was thinking of a Western song or an old cowboy song or old thing you know, back in the 1800s, and, and this one's called Mississippi Moon. <laughs> And the only thing it brought me was that Mississippi. Moon. 